10,000 international units of vitamin D3. Is this a huge mistake or a miracle cure? You talk to an average person about vitamin D, they're probably used to taking 600 I use a vitamin D3, sometimes up to a thousand, maybe two thousand. But when you talk about ten thousand I use, some people actually freak out because ten thousand sounds like a very, very large number, especially compared to something like vitamin B1, which the recommendations for that is like 1.2 milligrams. If you were to convert ten thousand international units of vitamin D3 into milligrams, the number would only be 0.25 milligrams. That's only one fourth of one milligram. Today we're going to talk about why an average person should be taking 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 as a maintenance dosage every single day. Vitamin D is the most important vitamin. Why? Because it controls 10% of all your genetics. Over 90% of the population has less than 40 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D3, which actually is on the low side. The guidelines for 600 international units of vitamin D3 were based on preventing rickets. They're based on supporting bone health and calcium in the blood. They're not based on supporting everything else that vitamin D does. Think about how many people are inside. People don't go outside anymore. And then you also have where you live. If you're living in a northern part of the world, it's very difficult to get vitamin D3. I want to explain something called the shadow rule. If you're outside and your shadow is longer than you are tall, you are not getting any vitamin D just because of the angle where the sun is to the earth. You also can't get vitamin D through glass. So when you're driving your car and you're getting the sun through the glass, you're not getting any UV that's creating uh, vitamin D. The darker your skin, the less vitamin D you're going to absorb. Dark skin individuals need 10 times more exposure to the sun to get the same amount of vitamin D3. And if they don't get enough vitamin D3, some of the common symptoms you're going to get lower back pain or achiness, especially that radiates into the hip or the thighs, very tight muscles in the lower back. Blood pressure will start to go up because something called nitric oxide, the thing that really controls blood pressure is stimulated by vitamin D3. Another common symptom of vitamin D deficiency is depression or even anxiety. If you're low in vitamin D, your immune system cannot work. You're more susceptible to having just inflammation anywhere in the body. What about all these facial creams that women use? Putting sun blocker in so many facial creams and makeups now, uh, it's just going to block your vitamin D3. In 1980, our whole society became sun phobic. We want to prevent skin cancer. Here's the problem. Since 1980, melanoma has continued to go up. Obviously, the sun wasn't the cause of it because most melanoma skin cancer occurs in areas of your body where you're not exposed to the sun. My viewpoint is that melanoma really comes from low vitamin D, but that's a different video. For all these functions in the body, especially the immune system, you need at least 10,000 IUs every single day, which is the same thing of being out in the sun for 20 minutes in the summertime. I mean, that's not toxic. There's a thing called vitamin D resistance. When they test your vitamin D in your blood, they're not checking the active form of vitamin D. They're checking this inactive form. This vitamin D has to go from the inactive to the active through various steps. And then it has to be accepted into the vitamin D receptor. There's a lot of things that block the vitamin D receptor. Genetics. A lot of people have genetic issues with the vitamin D receptor. And you can get your DNA test to figure that out. Another really big thing that will block your vitamin D absorption is plastics. This is a huge problem in our society right now. We are just being filled with plastics and other chemicals they call forever chemicals, which are interfering with our biological chemistry, especially the absorption of vitamin D3, as well as the production of testosterone. As you age, it's more difficult to absorb vitamin D because your skin is thicker. If you are overweight, have irritable bowel syndrome or any inflammation in your gut, you're going to have a hard time absorbing vitamin D3. Being pregnant, breastfeeding, very, very important to take more vitamin D3. I would recommend 10,000 I use every single day, and that's a very conservative number. On top of all of that, magnesium is the most important other nutrient to factor in when you're taking vitamin D3 because vitamin D3 won't work 
without magnesium because as you increase your vitamin D3, the demand for magnesium goes up too. Vitamin D gives a broad spectrum of positive effects, helping prevent cancer to shrinking tumors, but you need therapeutic dosage to do that, any inflammation in the body, and especially autoimmune diseases. If someone has an autoimmune disease, which a lot of people do nowadays, they need much higher amounts of vitamin D3. There's a doctor in Brazil that specializes in autoimmune diseases. He has over a thousand videos of before and afters using high doses of vitamin D3 for just about every single autoimmune disease that you can imagine. His wife had MS. Guess how much vitamin D she's taking on a daily basis? 100,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day. If you're using vitamin D as a therapeutic effect for certain diseases. I think it's important to work with a doctor that specializes in that, that knows about it, that can check various things in your blood to make sure that you don't develop too much calcium in the blood. But if you look at the data, you'd have to take hundreds of thousands of vitamin D3 for months to create this hypercalcemic effect. And I will put a link down below of a group of doctors that you can contact to see if you can work with one of them if you're trying to use therapeutic dosages to correct a disease. If you wanted a really good home test to be able to test yourself with vitamin D and you don't need a prescription for this, I put a link down below of a great company that can do that. It's through an organization that supports the science of vitamin D3. So there's a lot of great information and I'll put their website down below. And then if it's too low to find out what you can do to raise it and then maintain it at a certain level because addressing this vitamin D deficiency is the lowest hanging fruit of creating the most health with the least amount of effort, money, complications, without risking any type of safety issues. It's completely safe. Our bodies were designed to get a lot of sun, but unfortunately nowadays, we don't get enough sun. We're going to have to change our lifestyle and get more sun or at least take more vitamin D3. And I would recommend as a minimum dosage, just as a maintenance dosage, 10,000 I use of vitamin D3. I would make sure it also has K2, magnesium, and zinc with that vitamin D3. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress, and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then 
you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.